Good greetings everybody and welcome to my Sunday live stream. I just about made the live stream today. I don't know about you guys, but I personally just about got here. Wow. Okay, it's been an extremely busy day for me. Um and it's been quite a struggle to get this stream to work today um to do what I wanted to do. And the fact that I've managed it, I think, has all been very, very, very last minute. So it could all go wrong. You just have to pull a string and it could all unravel. But we'll try it and uh, make it work. Uh, so welcome to the today's stream, guys. Uh, let's have a look, see who's on the chat. So we have Commander Steve Zodiac. Got in there first up, and loot, hi loot, greeting sir, Alex, PK78, hi Alex, is it worth it? Mm. Yes, is it though? Mm. <laughs> Commander Tony Edwards, hi Commander Tony Edwards, greetings Mr. Smiley, hello, Lynn Deb, hi Lynn Deb, uh, General Patch, greetings General Patch, I'm going to run out of ways to say hi. So I'll just be easier to run through the names. <laughs> Kai Zen. Hey, Kai. Greetings uh, from the Loose Screws podcast crew there. Um, yeah, go check those guys out. Okay, Commander Selim. Greetings. Commander Selim. Um, yeah, they didn't get the 20 likes. They failed, failed. We did get a dislike. I think I know who that might be. <laughs> Sorry, it just makes me laugh. Because if it's who I think it is... It's somebody who claimed that they, quote, didn't give a fuck. Uh, and, yeah, if that was them, then they're proving themselves wrong because they clearly do, which makes me laugh. I think that's funny. Anyway, Angry Citizen. Uh, I've dropped the F-bomb already. Yeah, right, Angry Citizen. Greetings, sir, and how are you? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Andy K. Hi, Andy, my man. Balding Beagle... Ah, oh, Commander Corvus Corax, never more. Um, yeah, Luke got here before you. <laughs> um, yeah, Aquatic Borealis, greetings, greetings, greetings. For teenies here, we got quite a few people that were waiting for the stream to start today. It was pretty cool. Uh, Knight Templar, hi Knight Templar, Commander Budman One A O. Um, I keep seeing, when I see AO, I don't know, it's it's my 3D graphics brain. I just read ambient occlusion every time I see AO. I don't know why. So, yeah, greetings, Commander Bugman. Um, who else we got? Rick Midkiff. Rick's in the house. Yay. Uh, and the big dog. <laughs> Woof. Yeah. Don't worry, my, my bark's worse than my bite, I promise. Oh, Aquatic, you just got a puppy. Oh, man. Awesome. Well, look after him, her. And Rusty's a great name. <laughs> uh, hey, if you have any pictures, man, post post the pictures of the puppy on Discord. That'd be awesome. Commander, I hope it was a, I hope it was a shelter dog that you rescued. Because it should have been. But no, it's cool. Um, yeah, well done. Commander Lost Legion. Hi, Commander Lost Legion. Greetings. Kathina's in the house. Thankfully, I might need you a bit later, so please hang around. Um, <laughs> Alex, PK, got you already. Luke, got you already. Commander Scoid, UK is here. 07 to you, sir. Uh, who else we got? Armour Elite. Good evening to you, Armour Elite. Commander Colonel X is with us. Um... Oh, Alfie. Oh, Alfie's cute. That's a cute name. Yeah, now you've got to name one of your ships Alfie. It's, it's the done thing. You have to name your ship after his, after your dog. Oh, is that is that just me? <laughs> All right, guys. So, today... Uh, uh, right, today we're going to be looking at um, Game Glass, which is a product... Uh, that is recently out, I think. I think it's recently out. I just got informed of it. Um, I was contacted, as well as, I think, a few other Elite Dangerous and Star Citizen YouTubers were. 
about this. Um, so I have jumped on board to check this out. Um, it cost me some money to check this out today because I couldn't get this damn thing running. It will not run on my iPad because my iPad's old and crinkly and wrinkly and it needs to be put to sleep. So um, I, the operating system won't go up high enough to run this. Uh, I could run it on my phone, but I couldn't really show you it on my phone because it, the the interface is a lot more minimal. Um, and I really wanted to show it on a tablet. So I went out today and I bought a tablet just for this bloody thing. It was I, I got it secondhand, but it's an Android. It's a Lenovo tablet running Android 8.1. Android 7 is the minimum for this, so I'm fine. So yeah, I had to go out and buy that, which is an outlay. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get pleasure out of it anyway, because I'm going to use this tablet in place of my iPad, which is now old and cronky. So, yeah. <laughs> the term is influencer. I know, isn't that self, like, I don't know. Like, what is it? What's that term when you have like an eye, a high opinion of your own worth? Influencer. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't consider myself an influencer. I'm a YouTuber. You know. I, I don't buy into all that. But uh, yeah, you're quite right though. That is the new. That is the new term. I've heard that a few times. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so this game glass thing. Um. You know me, guys. I haven't been playing around with this for hours, got up to scratch with it, and then presenting it to you. Oh, no. I'm going in. <laughs> I'm going in blind, like, yeah. So, it basically, if I can set it up, then anybody can set it up. But I'll be showing you it. Um, you can run it on your... Um, you can run it on your browser as well, but you cannot run it on the browser... Like, if you like me, or you have a triple screen setup, you can't run it on a browser on one of the outside screens, because that's not going to work, for obvious reasons. Uh, because you need to click the, the function you want, and as soon as you click it, the game loses focus, and so it can't carry out the key press command onto the game. Um, so that's out. What you can do, though, is bring a little laptop or a notebook next to your PC, and you can run it off there, if you haven't got a tablet or a, or a phone that can run it. Or you don't want to run it on your phone and you haven't got a tablet, whatever. You can run it, you can run the app version on a browser, which is really cool. Now, uh, before we get into Game Glass, um, I want to have just a little rundown of today's stream, really, before we get into it, to get to grips with it. I have backed up all of my keybinds, so any changes that I make today, um, I'm going to reset later on. Now, there are other systems out there where you can use a, a tablet um, to control game functions, like uh, I think Rockat is one. Um, but the thing with Game Glass is it's specifically designed for Elite Dangerous. Uh, and I think there's a Star Citizen version as well. <clears throat> and they, each screen is called a shard. And there's also a fragment, but I'm not quite sure what that is yet. Um, so you have to buy the shards separately. Now the only other thing which might put some people off is that it is a subscription based thing. So it is, you can pay per month or you can pay an annual fee where you get it cheaper and you pay per year. It's not really expensive, but um, it is subscription based. So it's not my favorite way of doing things. I prefer to just say, you know, here's, here's my payment and that's it. But you know, if the product works and it's something that I use a lot, then I'd kind of be fine with it. So, are they crystalline shards and fragments? You know, it's really strange that it's called shards and fragments because, yeah, there is that link and that is spooky. I don't know whether that's coincidence or by design. Um, and the only other thing I'm going to say about it before... I show it to you is that if any of you want to purchase this, um, I am an affiliate, whatever that means. I have no idea what that means, but I'm an affiliate. What it means is I can give you a redeem code and you will get 5% off. I get a little bit of commission too, um, so we both benefit. So yeah, 
The good thing with this um, is it's not just a key press simulator. It's more than that. So we will come to that a little bit later on in the stream. Um, but I'm quite excited about it. I think it looks really cool. So let's have a look. See who we've got on here. Um, Wasp. Hey, Wasp Zero. Greetings. Yes, nice to catch you here as well. Um, <laughs> influenza. Yeah. Well, when things go viral. Yeah. Uh, it won't work with a Nokia flip phone. <laughs> no. But w indirectly, you could. You could find somebody, a friend with a tablet, and you could shout the commands down your Nokia phone to him, and he can press them. Um, it, the way this works, though, I mean, look, in my car, I mark the head unit in my car is Android-based, okay? So I've got Google Play and all that palaver in the car. So I can actually load the Game Glass um, app in my car and control Elite Dangerous from my car, which is a ridiculous scenario. You know, I could go down, get in the car, press um, the boost button or the open cargo hatch button, and it will it will do it in the game. If the game is running upstairs in my computer room, it will it will open the cargo hatch from my car. So that's nuts. But yeah, you can do that. <laughs> um, the Nokia flip phones were brilliant. They were so cool. Yeah, only five percent, I'm afraid. Um, it is what it is. Uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Selim, can you go to UI Scooty in the game? Unfortunately, you cannot. It's not in the game, uh, which is a massive shame uh, because it is the biggest star in the... It's weird that they've missed that one out. I don't get that. It's the biggest star in the Milky Way and they miss it out. I don't understand why it's not in there. I, I, I don't get that, but there you go. Demos Alpha, hey, thank you. I hope so. I hope I will. <laughs> Have you posted the link for Game Glass? No, all coming up. I will post all the stuff in the video description after the stream, so don't worry, it will all be there. Um, now, yeah, obviously, having the Game Glass in front of you, you have to take your hands off the keyboard and go and actually press something. Um, but anyway, we'll get into this a little bit later. <clears throat> Uh, also in the stream, I'm going to be looking looking at the possibility of refitting the Corvette, Cathina. So I, right now, as you know, my Corvette is multi-cannon build only, um, which means constantly having to restock. And I don't want to keep restocking. So I want to go with a you'll never run out of ammo scenario. So I'm looking at the possibility, maybe Cathina can guide me here, at having the two large weapons being efficient beam lasers with thermal venting and the others being pulse lasers with some kick-ass damage on there just so that I can sit in a has res and just keep going until I get sick of being there pretty much um, so yeah I think VY Canis Majoris is there I think I think you can um, but yeah, yes, I'm getting to that, Alex. Yes, you can buy the shards as a one-time purchase, um, and you can subscribe. But we'll, we'll we will come to all of that. I promise. Uh, will it work on PS4? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. I've not seen or heard anything like that. Because you you need an app running on the PC, and you need, and then the app on the on the on your device whether it be a tablet or a phone um links with that just by by the login <laughs> um yeah i got good damage on this corvette at the moment Cathina, but the problem is you know by the time i've made a, somewhere between a million and two million depending on what's been out there i'm out of ammo already i don't, I don't just want to i just want to sit in there for longer and some of the systems I go to, they don't have, um, they don't have places or easy places for me to land at, to go and restock. So it's a bit of a, yeah. Okay, so Game Glass, what is it? 
what is it? Right, well, it needs to be configured first. Now, you can... Oh, forgive me, I've just pressed something I shouldn't have done. As for the key binds, um, you do get this one, which is all of their keys. But then, of course, things like your flight controls, they'll all be gone, so you have to set those up again. So, rather than use the game glass one, what I'm doing is I'm using my my normal keybinds, and I'm going to add theirs on top of mine. So, I need to get my Corvette to Shinrata Desra. It's spinning at the moment because my joystick, the one that I replaced uh, with a, yeah, the replacement joystick, it's doing the same thing, look. It moves on its own. My joysticks are just knackered. So I need to get to Shinny. I am about four jumps away. And to do that, I need to be able to jump into Super Cruise, perhaps. And also to jump to the next system and whatever. So, let's have a look. And I'm just going to show you the Game Glass um, interface first. Because I think it looks pretty cool. So this is the Flight Systems one. What you're seeing right now, I don't know what the quality is like, but what you're seeing is my tablet's screen. Uh, okay, so you have functions like heatsink, uh, silent running, engine boost, analysis mode, landing gear, cargo scoop, ship camera, night vision, super cruise, hyperspace. You've got the galaxy and system maps up in the top there. Um, you've got your throttle amount, which I think is probably going to be shown. I don't know if I... If I switch to half throttle in game, I don't know if it's actually going to show it. Oh, I think that's actually something that you press. Yeah, that's something that you press. Okay. And we've got pit management and orbit lines you can turn on and off at the bottom there to hide the hood and lights. But to make those work, you need to set them up in your... in your... Um, in your key bindings, okay? So let's have a look at the other ones. We've got the combat shard here, which is... Um, you can turn those sounds off, by the way. So the combat shard, you've got information about your target, your heat sinks, shield cells, chaffs, uh, charge ECMs, your fire group you can change, you can deploy or retract, your hard points. Mine looks... Oh, it is okay. You can't see it, can you? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a mix screen in a minute, so you'll you'll see. We got target ahead, um, highest threat, previous next hostile, cycle the subsystem, cycle targets. Now, how convenient this is for you to t to take your hand off the keyboard because I've got my my the keys for doing a lot of these functions right next to where my hand is, so it's more inconvenient for me to to go to the tablet, but in combat, th things are, need to run really fast, you know, you can't be losing any time, so... Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'd, I would use it so much for combat as I would for mining and exploration. Um, but yeah, and you'll see across... You've got the top tabs, flight systems and combat, and mining and exploration. Underneath there, you can see what how much fuel I have left by percentage. Um, and on the right hand side you can see the system that I'm in and the amount of credits that I have. I don't know about a big disadvantage in combat. I, I don't know. I, I can't see that it's going to do anything better or quicker. I mean, you have some functions on the right there like max, max, max. So you can quickly max engines or max weapons or max systems out very quickly. Now that's just one press. Uh, and if the tablet is right in front of you, if you have one of those, um, one of those covers that turns into a stand, so you can stand the the, the, the tablet right in front of your or right behind your keyboard, I should say, um, it might not be too bad. Um, I'm certainly willing to give it a go, and the interface looks like it's straight out of the game. I mean, the the font, the colors. It, they, it, it looks like it's come out of the game to me, you know. So, 
At the moment you've just seen a little bit of information about the target and some key prices here. Let's go into mining and we will test this out. You see, you see, <laughs> we have a ring finder guys. These are systems with rings near your system or in neighboring systems, types of rings uh, and it's not telling me the reserve at the moment, whether they're pristine, but I think you can do that, okay? Now, before we get there, on the left-hand side, it says prospecting. This is where, when you send out a prospector limpet, you know, if you want to know the information from that limpet, you have to target the prospector limpet. And then when it hits the rock, it gives you the info. If I'm not mistaken, this gives you the prospector info without you having to target the prospector limpet. So you can find out all the details on there. Um, so you've got your seismic charges, low, medium and high. Um, I haven't used any of this stuff yet. Hey, Darren Roberts, Leo Sagan and uh, yeah, Knight, Knight Templar. I think I said hi, did I? Yeah, Knight Templar, hi. Uh, Voyager 2 in the game. Yes, Voyager 2 is in the game. So, <clears throat> if we look at, uh, I don't know if you, if you guys can see this okay, we've got ring type, any. I'm going to select that and I want to choose icy. Oops. I got big fingers guys. There we go, icy rings. So now I've just got a list of systems that have got icy rings in them. Now, reserve level. I'm going to choose, why, why Why would I want to choose depleted? I don't know. I'm going to hit pristine and see if there's any in the area. Now, let's go with any ring type that's pristine. Loading. I don't know how far it looks either. I don't know what the distance is. Okay, no results found there. So I don't know, I, don't, I really don't know where the, um, you know, where the uh, thing is, so where the range is on that one, or even if you can adjust that range, I don't think so. So we have um, major, major um, reserve levels there on these systems, and you can't click on each of these systems, you can just get the information. But it's, like I say, it's more than a key press simulator, it's, a, it's informational as well, and I'm hoping they're going to be adding to this. Now, in no other place do we need informational, more so than exploration, I would say. So let's have a pop into exploration. <clears throat> and check this out. It tells me that there's an Earth-like world here in this system, and it's terraformed. Okay, this is the current system. And in the target system, which is my next one is, where is it, it's Ross something, yep, Ross 854, and as you can see, the, the arrival star will be an M-class Red Dwarf star, so now we know that before I even start the jump. Um, and Ross 854B is also a Red Dwarf star, so there's two stars in this next system that we're coming up to. <coughs> what else have we got? Uh, the jump range, 29.5. That's the jump range of my ship, it must be. Remaining four jumps. Ah, so this is this middle part is information about my, my journey, I would say. Um, 1K class, 2M class in the target system. And one belt in this system, yep. Let's have a look at stations. Oh, fuel. 70%. Yep. Closest scoopable star, look. How cool is that? Closest scoopable star, 20 light years away. Wow, really? Hmm. You're telling me that there isn't a closer scoopable star than 20 light years? Okay. Well, I'm here. What about this one? F white star, scoopable. There you go, 
10 light years away is an M-class star. So I'm not sure. I know you didn't see that, but trust me. Um, in fact, I will show you guys. So there it is. Uh, 10 light years away, 10.2 light years is a M red dwarf star. So I'm not sure where this closer scoop came from. It's got the full spectrum scanner there you can use. Stations here, uh, Volk Dock, which has a large pad. Okay. So I'm just showing you these functions on its own first before we get into the mixed screen. Um, Mad Seeker, hey, Mad Seeker. Um, I had a green screen every second. That's no good. Hey, John Smith, greetings to you, sir. All right, so let's have a look at this in mixed. Let's see how this is going to work. So if we go to a mixed screen. All right, so I'm going to have to configure. In fact, I'm going to go full screen or on the game first because I want to show you we're going to set up a couple of keys here. So if I go into options and controls. So the idea is that this will use. Um, so if you have uh, something configured here, uh, we need to use this one for game glass. So let's pick something on the flight system screen. So Silent running, heat sink, engine boost, which engine boost is already configured to tab, it's, that's normal. And analysis mode. Okay, analysis mode on and off for me is the F1 key. Um, I can't remember <laughs> where to go to change this. Uh, okay, ship lights, left control L is what I use. Let's do that one. So we click here and now we press the button on the tablet corresponding to the lights. It says it's already bound to night vision. Do you want to rebind it? Yeah. So Game Glass is already using a key that I'm using. I'm going to have to do it though. Okay, just for demonstration purposes. So now I'm going to have to remap night vision. Uh, cargo scoop, let's do that one. Uh, which is this one? That's fine, you can overwrite that one. That's that's okay. Uh, it normally uses like left control, alt, you know, it uses combo keys, so it, it attempts not to interfere with any of your stuff, but anyway. So landing gear, um, I'm quite prepared to overwrite that one. Oh, already using the same one. Um, what do we need to do? Let's have a look. Landing gear we've got. Uh, shield cell banking. I think that's going to be in... I'm not even going to use it, to be honest. I'm never going to use that or the chaff. Here we go, night vision, night vision setup. I believe that is the key. Yep. But I need it set up in the game now. What about N? Yeah, awesome. Right, mode switches. Galaxy map, and we'll press the galaxy map button on the tablet. is bound to follow me. Okay. It's really messing up my key binds here. <laughs> but hey, I don't mind remapping a few if I have to. So system map is going to be this one. So I yeah, I've just got to I like these F these function keys that I'm using for my ship launch fighter. 
I can change those from F9 and F11 to Shift F9 and Shift F11. So it's not really a big deal on that one. Engine boost is working. Silent running. Uh, oh, FSS mode. Hold, hold. Switch cockpit mode. There we go. So let's overwrite the uh, gamepad. And we go into this one. I don't like the fact that it uses M's. Uh, what else? I want to use um, hyperspace and super cruise as well. I want to get those mapped on there. So, anyone? Ah, oh, here we go. So, super cruise there. And that's not the right one. I don't want to use that one. I want to use that one for hyperspace. Okay. I think that's pretty much everything there, except for the throttle controls. So do we have, yeah, we do. So zero is X also, that one. Okay. I'll put it back there then. Uh, 25%. 50%, I'm just pressing 50% throttle on the game glass. 75% there. And... Set speed to 100. I want to use this one. Alright, so now that should be all of those. All right, so let's transition to the mix screen and see where we are. So all I've done is just pressed all these buttons on here. I didn't do, um, the one thing I didn't do was um, silent running. Anyone know where silent running is? Is it in miscellaneous? I wish they would give us a search function here where you could just start typing in S I L and then it would just come up. We've got so many things here. Can you remap keys on the game glass side? Um, no, I don't think so. Game glass have got their own bindings, which they install. Um, but it's either, it's either using all their bindings and adding your own or using your own and adding theirs. You can't change it from within the game glass system. As far as I'm aware, uh, if we go into the menu, can you see that? Yeah, we've got sync settings. I think it automatically syncs anyway. Um, pooling, silent running, and that would be there. Now I'm assuming that adding adding silent running um, will work once I add it to one screen. It will work on all the others. I'm, I presume. So deploy a heat sink. We'll use this one. Okay, which is V for some reason. All right, let's go back into the game then. So I am now going to press the engine boost button, which you can see is lit up because my finger is still on it. Let's leave go. Nothing. Did I map it? Yes. There we go. All right. So, system map. There it is straight away. Lovely. I came in this system because it's named after one of my sister's dogs. I was going <laughs> I wanted to check it out. Um, all right, so if I press system map again, okay, and hyperspace. Now it says on the game glass, ooh, we get animation. It says it's charging. I'm gonna need to go into full throttle, so I'm gonna press 100%. Is that 100%? Yeah, it's 100%. That's not a hundred. That's more like seventy-five. 
Yeah, I think I pressed the wrong thing here. Did I even do 100%? I haven't done it right, I know that. Let's boost. Yeah, you can turn the beep noise off. Don't worry. I, I just have it on there for two reasons. One, it's a recognition of that I pressed something. And B, it's for you guys to, to know that I pressed something. Hey, India Calva. Greetings, India. Right, according to this, the fuel is down to 45%. Oh, I didn't map the button for the orbit lines either. I'm going to need to scoop. This ship runs really hot when it's scooping. I'm just going to sit here. Right, I'm going to put the throttle to 25. There we go. But I'm tending to use the same hand to do this as I'm using on my joystick, which is kind of weird. Okay, I can tell you that with the 100% is not working. Um, don't worry, that's my fault. I just, <laughs> I told you my ship runs hot. My throttle, uh, I think I might have messed something up here. Set speed to 100%. No, that's correct. Uh, it's using left alt plus num3, so the chance of you having that mapped already is remote. That's what I mean, sometimes they, tr they, they try and use a different key, something way out, out there, but yeah, that's not going to 100%. That's a little bit buggy. What's it say now? Frame shift drive is ready. We have a little animation for that. Okay, so with my tablet in my right hand, uh, my joystick in my left, I'm going to hit hyperspace. What is Game Glass? Game Glass is what you're looking at right now. It is a an app that you can run on a Android or iOS tablet stroke phone. And with the app running on your PC as well, where they talk to each other, um, it, you can control your game. It is a remote key press app mainly, but there's also some cool information on here and I would like to see it more informational than it is as well. Like on exploration, I'd like to know information about systems. Like in mining, it tells you about the rings and things like that. Um, let's have a look. Silent running is animated for some reason. Right, what do we have? Analysis mode. Okay, let's press that. Okay, that's done it. So analysis mode is is up. Press it again. Yep, fine. But uh, if you go into exploration, you'll see now that there are only the one body here. Full spectrum scanner. Oh, I didn't put that on, did I? I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> Imagine if I pressed that and it started self-destruct instead. So target next system. That's another thing I didn't. I didn't uh, configure. Yeah, I haven't configured all the buttons yet. Night vision. Did I do that? I did. That's working. Landing gear. I think is working. Heat sink is working. I'm not going to take one out. So my fuel is 100% according to this. All right. Let's do the jump. Um, it's weird how you can't, like there's a lot of space in the middle of this screen but I can't perform a hyperspace jump from it. I'm hoping they're going to be adding more, they're going to be adding more um, stuff to this. But I want to check out that Prospect Olympic thing. Let's go into mining. So you have all these ring types. I want to find, um, if I switch the, this to pristine and I just keep it on there all the time, maybe when I jump near one it'll tell me. Oh yes, look, as soon as I've jumped in it's reloading. 
I wonder how close to Delcar I'm going to have to get before it's going to tell me. Did I do the opening and closing of the cargo bay? I'd like to see buttons on here for the fire groups for the collectors firing the collector limpets off as well. What I like about this though is it it looks part of the game. So if I put my tablet behind my keyboard next to my monitor, all the fonts and everything is the same. So it, it kind of looks like an extension of your desk stroke cockpit kind of thing, you know? I didn't, I didn't change the, I didn't map the keys for fire groups yet either. Okay, so let's head over to Jameson. Whoa, hello. We've got some pristine level rings nearby. They've just popped up. Crucis sector. Let's check that. Let's, let, me, let me just throttle down to zero. So Crucis sector A33. I'd like to be able to click on that and have the galaxy map targeted. <coughs> I don't know whether you can even do that though, that would be ridiculous. So Crucis Sector A3 and body number 7 and 7A has pristine rings. Do they? Let's have a look. Crucis Sector, what does that say? Is that OI or DIT, OIT? I don't know, my eyesight can't... Uh... Oh, sugar. I can't press my M to do my galaxy map now. Crucis. I want to know how far it is. Sector. Oops. Try spelling it right. Crucis sector. I don't know if that's a DI or an OI. I'm going to go with OI. Dash. T. That's the one, A31. No, that's not the one. It's just A3. Oh, let's let's specify it then. I thought A3 might have been one of the bodies, which is why I didn't put it. A3. Dash. Three. Okay, so that's 48 light years away. And are you telling me? Oh, I can go in. Okay. So the seventh body has a pristine reserve, according to this. Now you see, I wouldn't know, I won't know if this has a pristine reserve until I go and scan the damn thing. But it's saying it has. So I don't even have to go over there to scan it. I already know it's pristine. So it kind of defeats the object of having to go there and... Uh, do an FSS scan or anything like that, it already tells me. It's not coming up here because I haven't mapped it. But yeah, it reckons that that is a pristine. And it's 48.49 light years apparently, according to Game Glass. 48.43 there. Oh, it is three, sorry. Yeah, my eyes again. And it's 1. 1,743 light seconds from arrival. That particular body. Anything else on there? No. And, oh, and selling locations. Guys, let's pop into that. Uh, selling. Okay, so I want to... Uh, right. I've never heard of Chairbone's blood crystals. Um, what the hell? Anyone know what Chebone's Blood Crystals is? So if I want to sell mm, low temp diamonds... Come on, give me some good places to sell. No results, really? Okay, let's go with... Oh, when it says selling locations... Are these places that sell them? That would be weird. 
or places where you can go to sell them. That would, which would make more sense. Nagan... Nag what? Nagandrii fire opals? Guys, what the hell is this? Look at this. Nag Nagandrii fire opals. And Cherbonis blood crystals. Okay, let's try Benitoite. Selling locations. I want I want to see prices and I want info. No, no, come on. I think perhaps the range is not as far out as it should be. What's something that is oh, void opals? Should we try those? Aha! So Shinrata Desra price is 97,000. New Nets 651,000. Let's put them in price order. There you go. Void Opals, you can sell them at Pachita for 1.2 million. Look at the price in 39 Leones. That's it's quite a jump down. Let's who's got the lowest price? Who's the stingiest? Gits. LHS 278. Maud Slay Station. Selling for six. Well, you can sell them there, I imagine that what that is is 659. Which is almost half the price of Pachita. Yeah. Um, Corvus, when rusting, when rusting, <laughs> when rusting the game glass while playing, while running the game glass while playing, and if you have other apps running on the tablet, will you get pop-ups or announcements like you've got mail? <laughs> Probably, but it, they may jump in front. I haven't had any so far, but I've not, I've only had the tablet for a few hours. <laughs> I only just bought it today to do this video. Um, but yes, uh... I would imagine, but it won't. I don't know, you'd maybe turn notifications off. I don't know. It's a good question. It's a good question. But I don't know is the answer. And if you do, I, I don't know how quick it would... Because it would be a bit of a... Um, a nuisance, but I suppose if you get... Um, pop-ups regular, say Gmail or whatever, Google Mail... You can maybe decide to go and turn those off before you run. I don't know. I don't like to get pop-ups or anything. I turn them all off. Because they just annoy me. Alright, so let's go back to flight systems. 75% throttle. Which keeps me in the blue zone. I wonder if they could run macros on this. So, for example, if you wanted to do Super Cruise Assist, uh, that you would have to, it, the game would, uh, the, the program would have to run a macro to go to the left panel, then, yeah, but it, it depends. If, if I'm in the wrong tab, it's not going to work. This is very much the problem you get when you get voice assist. Uh, voice, yeah, voice assist. When you're using that, it's, it's voice attack. Get it right in the end. <laughs> All right, so keeping my throttle where it is at seventy five percent because it's in the blue. And I should be able to hit either the hyperspace or the supercruise button. And that will jump me out when I need it to. Yeah, I think it is. It's certainly getting information like EDDB does on things like rings and stations. And um, in exploration, you have, you know, your current system and what's nearby and stuff like that. So yeah, I think um, very much, I, I'd like to see it 
a lot more information on what it is. Okay, so let's press Super Cruise. There we go. Okay, now engine boost. This bit I'm going to have to do myself. And I want my throttle now to be at zero because I'm going to be using um, maneuvering thrusters now to come in. One thing I want to quickly test is the prospector limpet. So the, if you guys want to check this out, I'm, I'm going to show you the website later, but the website address is gameglass.gg. Um, <clears throat> you can check it all out there, but I will be showing the website on the stream. Attention. No visual on landing gear. <laughs> what a strange way to say it. No visual on landing gear. Just say you can't see the landing gear. Or please deploy your landing gear. No visual. Uh, greetings to you, sir. So let's go to the shipyard and pick up one of my two mining ships. Now I've got either the Python, which is for deep core, and I've got the T9, which is for standard mining. But as long as they both have uh, the Prospector on board, it's not that one, this one. Let's take this one. This is strictly deep core mining ship, but I'm not specifically going to do that. Oh yeah, that's true Mr. Smiley. I don't think you could use game glass and VR at the same time. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, no, forget it. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Oh, wait though. Uh, no, you can't. No, I, I thought you could possibly hack around it, but no. Um, you could display game glass in your in your goggles, so you could you could look to the side and game glass could pop, pop in and you'd be there, but you wouldn't be able to press it. But I wonder if they had if you were able um, if they could make it so you could enable one of your VR controllers. Yeah. No, because what you would do is you would just you would go to app dot gameglass.gg and run the mobile version and then but as soon as you, again it's the same scenario the moment you press the button on the browser it takes the focus off the game and therefore the key won't get pressed in the game so it wouldn't work so let's launch and I think we can stay in Shinrata I think we just go here just go to the Oh, shh. what have I done? What have I done? Come on. Come on, guys. Tell me what I've done. Or not done. Ah. Give me strength, man. <laughs> we have to go back. Can you enable the camera to see outside? Yes, there is. Uh, you mean, can I? Yeah, I can. Can the game glass do it? Yes. Also, it can. I need to dock. I am terrible for this. Landing permission denied. Oh yeah, too far out. I didn't realize I got that far away. Now? Request approved. Please head directly for bay 4-5. Oh, Rusty, you're taking a liberty here. 4 five is at the back, but... Nice. That little tap slowed me down just enough. My baby. 
How cool does it look with this ship kit on? Too cool, too cool. Right, I need to add some limpettos. I always forget. I'll just take a few, 25. <clears throat> I don't plan on doing any actual mining, I don't think. Oh, quickly and safely. Oh. Well, I gave you one of them. I gave you the quickly option. The safely? Eh, not really. So, let's go to Super Cruise on the um, tablet. So, press that. Now, what have you done? That wasn't Super Cruise. You just. Jettisoned all my cargo, you son of a... You have left the no-fire zone. Be careful out there, Commander. What the hell did... Why? All those limpets are gone. Why? I just pressed Super Cruise. I must... Okay, I've obviously got a... I've obviously had a, a key bar, a key bind bound to two different places. <sighs> okay, so what are we looking at then? Jettison all cargo. I I've got that I should have jettison all cargo on some weird key press like control alt shift three L something that I can't possibly press. And clearly, Game Glass has just used the same key combination. Oh, I'll bet it just did. Yeah, left Alt and J. That's my own fault. Well, how was I allowed to map Super Cruise to left Alt and J and not be told it's already being mapped? That that should never even be mapped. Because you can do it from, you can jettison all cargo from the uh, from the right hand panel, so you should never ever map this. And I broke that rule. Oh dear me. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, left control J. There you go. Yep. Yep. Left Alt and J, that was the one. Yeah. Wow. That was that was my fault. I have I I put my hand up. That was my fault. I should I should have checked double game. But it shouldn't let it shouldn't have let me um rebind the other one. I'll tell you what's missing on the combat screen. Let me just double check. Yeah, flight assist off and on is not here. Also, um, I like the I like on the right hand side there above the pips where it mentions about shields recharging, overheating, and in danger. So that must work based on how much heat you're going through. Maybe after eighty percent it says in danger, and then. After a hundred, it probably says whatever the other one is. <coughs> Access authorized. Proceed to bay three eight. So let's go and pick up another twenty-five damn limpets and pray the super cruise works this time round. Normally the game tells you when you have double keybinds and it removes the previous one and assigns it to the new one. I swear on <clears throat> Oh thanks Corvus. <laughs> yeah, learn with Rusty. Make sure you don't have double keybinds. I think uh, I think in the game some systems will allow you to have the same key but for two different things because they, they can't interfere with one another, but clearly 
something went dramatically wrong here. Oh jeez, look at that, 10 grand, because I dumped all the limpets. Uh, if there was one left, I would have sent it out to pick the other ones up. This is the last time I'm getting bloody limpets. If you're unable to complete docking procedures within this time slot, you'll need to exit the bay and resubmit okay. a docking request. <laughs> I, I mean, I just never expected to press super cruise and, and have, have it dump all my cargo. Why, why is that slot always so tempting? And yes, that is the first time I've ever said that. So, let's try the super cruise button again. As soon as we're out of mass lock. So the 100% engine button doesn't work, that's for sure. And there's no reason why it shouldn't, unless it's infringing with something else. So let's hit Super Cruise. Oh, man. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, the, the engine throttle thing, though, is certainly not going up. Oh, I haven't mapped my pips, have I? Oh, yeah, there we go. I can change my pips just pressing those buttons at the bottom. So let's go into combat then. And I want to max out systems. Nice. Engines. I'm just pressing those little max buttons on the right hand side there, the little hexagonal ones. Yep, engines and two inter systems, perfect. So weapons I would expect. Oh, let's see how it does this one. Ah, so nothing in systems. And reset. Perfect. Alright, so weapons I'm going to hit plus twice. Once, twice. And then systems and... Yep, all working as expected. Max engines and... Perfect. Not quite. <laughs> I wanted... I wanted uh, max systems. Ah, okay, so you can specify then. So if I want shields and weapons, I would max shields first and then go to weapons, right? There you go. There you go. Highest threat, previous hostile. I haven't mapped those onto, on my keybinds yet, but I'm sure they're all going to work. Cycle targets. Yeah, this is handy, I guess, if you run out of buttons on your joystick or something, you know, and you run out of key keys. <laughs> there are plenty of keys so to assign. So perhaps it's a substitute for that as well, running out of buttons. Previous hostile, next hostile, I have that all on my on my joystick at the top, on the top buttons, and the targeting. Of, of hostiles, it's all on the hat key on the top of the joystick. So all the targeting and stuff when it comes to combat is all on my thumb. I can do everything on my thumb really quickly. Um, did I do orbit lines? No, so what the hell's that just done? Hide hood, I haven't done that. Can it do it? Yes it can. Because that's an in-game key. Orbit lines I haven't done, but I can take those off manually. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do loot. I was just thinking about that, Corvus, about being able to use um, a voice API like Google's or something and maybe be able to talk to it. Then you'd have voice attack, or functions of voice attack, and game glass kind of in the one, all under the one umbrella. That would be kind of cool. I mean, we know that the tablets and phones today have all, all got voice recognition, so there's no hassle there. Um, okay, let's go into flight systems. 
go to analysis mode. Oops, we were in analysis mode. And, oh, did I bring a detail scanner? I don't think. Yeah, I did. So, deploy weapons, let's have a look. Is it an exploration? Can you deploy there? No. No. So you've got to go to combat. So you've got to buy the combat shard if you want to deploy your weapons. And then fire groups I never altered. I have custom keys for that. So let's do a surface scan. And we'll just point it at the rings. I'm not expecting to find any hotspots in particular, but... Surface scan complete. And just as well, because there aren't any. Okay, so I'm going to go back into flight systems. Yes, I think some of the, some of the options like um, analysis mode and stuff should be repeated on the exploration screen. Because if you just buy the exploration shard, on its own, which I think each one is six six ninety nine dollars six dollars ninety nine. Um, I you're going to be missing some kind of essential stuff there. I think it's difficult, but to cram everything onto the one screen anyway. So oh, oh we have got analysis mode there. And it's not working. So, I, oh, jeez. Now this is a, this is weird. Why would it work? Oh, it's not working here either. But it just did. I have okay. I know why. I haven't got focus on the game. That would have helped. Let's try again. There we go. It's working. Yeah, I didn't. I. Yeah, I didn't have focus on the game because I had to go to the YouTube chat and OK a comment. Let's go in. So, can I alter my pips from here? Yes, I think so. Oh, shoot. Right. That was me, I was altering my, my pips. Remember, you can turn that sound off and probably even turn it down. Let's take a look in the menu. Go into menu, go into settings. Oh, it's probably disappeared. So, ah, uh, yeah, sound effects on and off, and you can alter the volume. Ah, uh, keybinds. Yeah, it's not really. And your different themes. I'm going to put the volume down to 50%. Try not to crash the ship as well. Right, where am I? I'm in Shinrata Desra. So why does it say current Wally B? Why hasn't that changed? I'm not in Wally B. So I'm not I'm not in Wally B. It says current system. Scan detected. Weird. Alright, so what I want to do, we're in exploration mode. Uh actually it's mining mode we need to be in. Grey Holland and a hey, Draco Maximilian. And nice to see you again, my man. Uh, map to the Warthog. Yeah, these Warthogs, um, clearly they're pretty cool. So let's deploy the hard points on the mining, which you can do. That's good. And let's stop the ship here. And we'll fire a prospector at this thing, or one of these two, this one. So, okay, if I fire a prospector then... So that's secondary. Now it says awaiting prospecting data. 
I'm going to fire it, but I'm not going to target the prospector. And we'll see if we get any info. Programming the drone. It's away. Let's see if it picks it up without me targeting it. Prospector limpet engaged. There you go. It has. 18.9 bromelite and no mother load complete. detected. Mother load is spelt incorrectly. It's not L O A D. I'll have to I'll have to send them a little ticket. <laughs> okay, no mother load, but I, I wasn't really searching for it. Oh, pulse scan. Now then. It's just sent a seismic charge off. Right, so clearly <laughs> I haven't got that um configured. Right, where's my seismic? Not my seismic, where's my pulse scanner? Mm, pulse wave analyzer, there it is. It's okay, it's it's there. On A. So how it's got pulse scan toggle. But Hmm. How does it know? Oh, does it expect it to be on primary? Yeah, I think so. I think you have to I think you have to put it to primary. Okay, so to make it work then, let's go to a fresh one. Fresh fire group. And we'll go to the pulse wave scanner. There it is. Pulse wave analyzer. Put it on primary. Seismic charge is, it says there, mouse 2, so secondary. So seismic charge launcher on secondary. All right, that's to make those two work with game glass. So we go to F. So let's do pulse scan. I'll press it now. Awesome, that's nice. And seismic charge, low, medium or high? Let's go with medium. How is that working? Hmm. I don't know how that's supposed to work. Let's fire another prospector somewhere. Actually, we'll, oops, drop me tablet. We'll do a pulse wave scan. I'm just going to increase engine speed a little. We'll do a few pulses. If you have two pr prospectors, I think it's probably going to focus on the most recent one. But that one is still on there. With the bromelite. And it has max average price and max price. Not available. Okay, let's fire a prospector then. Um, at this one, so I'm going to do it myself. Programming limpet drone. Prospect limpet failed. And we'll, and we'll, yeah, that other one fails. This one will be the new one. So let's see if this changes when it lands. Prospect limpet and engaged. it is indeed. Low temperature diamonds at 15.2 percent. scan complete. Water. 3.3 I think that is and hydrogen peroxide 1.8 no mother load detected it's going to annoy me now that they've not spelt mother load correctly <laughs> I'll deal with it <laughs> I'll deal with it I promise okay so I could go into flight systems then change my throttle to 25% come back to mining yeah it's kind of cool let's do another pull scan for the pull scan to work you have oh hello you have to have um, you have to have it mapped to a primary fire group and be in that fire group and the seismic charger has to be on the second one. But I don't know how to fire the seismic charger on and off because it's it's got low, medium, high, but it's not really doing anything. Right, and now I've got it on toggle. 
it's just doing it automatically, constantly, all the time. I kind of like that. Right, this is not a mother load, I don't think. It, no. So let's toggle it off. Okay, so that's cool. I like the fact that it can do that. I like that. That it can just keep scanning while you move. Right, let's fire off a prospector. So, um, that one. So we had 15.2 low temp diamonds. Greetings, Commander Maskeem, and to Alan Hobbs and Daddy Matsy. Hey, guys. Welcome, guys. Here we go. Me methane clathrate, liquid oxygen, and hydrogen peroxide. Now, let's target the prospector limpet and see if it uh, con concurs. Yep. The only difference here is, is that on the, in the leak, the, for what it matters, the um, decimal place is one extra. And material content medium, that information is not on the screen. Yeah. But it does, it, yeah, you, it, you can find out without having to target the damn thing. So you can probably prospect a couple and it'll just do it'll just do them in order. Let's try that one. Buy one off there. Last one. It could be, Kathina, you never know. Come on. I want to know the delay between it hitting the target and me getting the update. Oh, it's, engaged. yeah, that's pretty instant. Asteroid scan right, I'm going to put the pulse scan on toggle and press it. Oh, yeah, you've got to... Yeah. Oh! I get what it's doing now, okay. I just fired that seismic charge. I wonder if the low, medium, high... Oh, right. Is when you deploy one, it's how long it keeps the fire button down for, for you. Oh. Do I have to hold the button in then? Nope. So the seismic charge is, all right, I have it on primary here, let's try. So if I want to, I think you've got to have it on primary even though it says mouse 2. So if I say low, it doesn't do anything, okay, let's put the seismic charge on secondary then, which I think I had before, no. I can't make the seismic charge work. Oh, I think I know what's happening. Okay. I think I know what it is. I might know how to work this. I might have sussed it. So we need the seismic and the pulse wave on the same fire group in this order I think and then if toggle is off it does the pulse scan and if it's on does it do the seismic no so how the hell did I make it fire last time guys I'm, I'm trying to figure this out and I'm pressing high, but it's not firing it. Toggle doesn't do anything. I think that just messes with the... That makes the pull scanner scan com uh, continuously. Don't know how to fire the seismic charge, though. 
If it's meant to simulate the key press, which is mouse two, I don't have it mapped to mouse two anymore. So I think that's the problem. So if we go into controls and weapons, yeah, my secondary fire is that. So let's map this to mouse two. And that should make it work. So, okay. So I f I'm going to fire a low, a low seismic charge. Let's go with that one. Okay, now a high one. Cool. And now a medium. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's it. You just press low, medium, high, and as long as your mouse button is configured, it's going to work. And then you've got your pulse scan, which if you press toggle, it will keep scanning continuously. Gotcha. Right, but you need the pulse wave on primary and you need the seismic on secondary. That is a um, requirement of that. I don't think there's going to be any mother loads around here, though, guys. Do you? This you could work this along with voice attack, though, right? I mean, I could just have voice attack running now and then just say boost. Let's have a look at this one. Oops, that was was that me? Oh yeah, because I've got the pulse thing on. That was my fault. <laughs> yeah, that was me. I had the pulse scan running. I should have took that off before I switched fire groups. And now, I've, if it is a mother load, I'm already screwed because I've just sent it. I've just put a charge on there. But it will blow up. There we go. Let's see what this one gives us. Prospect Olympic engaged. It's not a mother load. But it has plenty of methanol crystals, Asteroid if you guys scan. are after Indeed. any of those. So, retract the hard points. Into flight systems. Into engine boost. Hmm. Um, it's working fine, it does work fine, it does require some keybind setting up, Delta, but the only awkwardness for me right now is I've only just bought this tablet and I don't have a cover for it or a stand. I can't stand it up behind my keyboard, so I'm basically holding it in my right hand the whole time. It's a little bit awkward like that. Um, other than that though, it works. It does work. Um, there's a couple of bugs I've found, um, which, which, uh, uh, like this one, in exploration, I'm not sure why the current system is still set to Wally, Wally B on this one, because that was the system I started the stream in, and I have jumped since then, so I don't think I can target this in time, no. So, yeah, I think that should switch when you jump, and it hasn't. Uh, the full spectrum scanner, I haven't got that mapped to Game Glass, so I won't be using that. Let's have a look and see where Jameson Memorial is. It's always... Oh, there was a hot spot there. Yeah. It must have been a tiny one then, because I didn't see it. But yeah, it works. It works. Whether it's worth it, that's something for you guys to decide. They also do one for um, Star Citizen as well. I haven't seen that one. I may test that at some point. Um, but I think for me, I don't know. 
I, I, in a way, I'd like to see more informational stuff, like the stuff you expect to get on EDDB. So you can go to the game glass and say, okay, I've got a cargo load full of slaves. Where's the best place to go and get them? And have like EDDB stuff on your tablet. I mean, yeah, you could go into a browser and just bring up EDDB there on your tablet. But to have something in with that, um, I, I, I'd get more use out of the information like that than I would pressing a key, to be honest. You know, just pressing heatsink or silent running or something like that. Um, I don't want to be pressing heatsink on a tablet during combat. It's it's a little bit too fiddly and it's I have to move my hand off the keyboard to go and press something. You know, and don't forget, this this is competing with the likes of voice attack and there's nothing quicker and easier than using your voice to do to do something. So um, but as an app it's I it is cool. It They've certainly made it look the part, and it is functional, and they've got all the fundamental stuff there. I, I would like for it to be more informational, um, really. It has some, like in the mining and exploration fields, the ring finder, that's very cool. That's probably one of my favorite functions of this. I love that, because that cuts down a lot of time for me, you know. Where's the nearest pristine rings? Um, what what type are they? You know, I, I like this ring finder and the fact that I can just choose pristine, and uh, it'll go ahead and try and find some. I did say go ahead and, but there you go. So yeah, it's going to go ahead. No results found, but as we're jumping around, I don't know what the range is on this, but I'd like it to be more than what I think. It is selling locations for particular stuff. That kind of information it, on a tablet in front of me, that would be super handy. Really, really would. Greetings, John. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> yeah, that would be super handy for me. Um, the key press stuff can stay in, I suppose, but maybe they can have separate informational screens and key press screens. Um, because yeah, I think you can take the time. Because if you're if you're in a position where you're ready to read information, it doesn't really need to be on the same screen. If you know what I mean. And Frontier need to get rid of those dialogues that tell you what key to press to do something. Press C to disengage. And Press J to abort. I mean, it's that's rid oh, ridiculous. What's this? I can't see again. We've got this bug where I can't move away from the contact screen. Okay, now it's working. Access granted. Clear to land at docking bay one one. So just as we dock, I will bring up the. Um, I'll bring you. Up, I'll show you the website, and then we'll we'll close Game Glass down and get down to some business with the Corvette. <coughs> the question I want to ask myself really is: Is it something I would see myself using? Again, or over and over again. Um, but the answer would be yes, I would if there was more information stuff on there. The ring finder stuff and selling locations where you can sell stuff that you've got in the exploration, for example, you know, information about your systems or nearby systems that may have Earth like worlds that maybe terraformable. I don't want to be told. If I'm out in the black exploring, this might, I don't know if you, any of you would agree with this, but if I'm in a system somewhere 40,000 light years away, 
I don't want this program to tell me, oh, in the next system there's a terraformable Earth-like. I don't want to be told that. I want to, you know, I don't mind a hint, like there may be Earth-like systems in neighboring systems, and then I have to go and find them. I don't want to be told that they're there. It's kind of a cheat, you know. I, if I miss them, I miss them, and that's my lookout. I don't want it to be telling me that kind of stuff. If they've already been discovered in the bubble, then that's fine, you know. Um, Greetings to all visitors. Yeah. Please alight at your assigned pad, and thanks for choosing uh, it's, this facility. It's not bad. It's not bad. Let's take a look at the old uh, Vibus, Vibus Citus. So let's nip into this. So this is the website then. So power up your games. You, oops. Oh, I hate this. You want to click on something. and So you have Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. So if we click into Elite, because that's where what we're interested in, in right? To keep bay traffic flowing smoothly, please follow so we've got uh, shards. So you have um, uh, and fragments. I guess fragments are the ones on the phone, and shards are the one on the tablet. I don't know. Yes, the fragments are the smaller versions that are for your phone. So well, there you go. Right. So there's basic shards for free just need to create an account. Um, I don't know what that encompasses, the basic ones. You can buy shards and you, you can put them Ensure on multiple devices and you can do the glass pass, the which is subscription based. So here are the shards for your tablet and they are $6.99 for the exploration, for the mining, and then you have this custom themes. Customize your game glass shard colors to match your hood. So if you're one of these people who've got a blue hood or a pink hood instead of an orange one, you can customize it with. You can customize this to match your your hood, which is kind of cool. Um, now the glass pass if you're unable to complete docking procedures is the subscription based we'll screen. So and this is what it is. It's three dollars sixty a month. But if you do the whole year, it only works out at 287 a month, and you'll build 3446 every uh, month, and that's with 20% off already. But you will get a further 5% if you use um, the redeem code of Rusty Dog. Um, Unlawful behavior in and around the starport is not permitted. We thank commanders for their cooperation. It's going to transition over. But yeah, if you use... Um, oh, where am I going? Excuse me, guys. Uh, there we go. Right, so that's the redeem code if you want a further 5% off. Uh, rusty dog and just put that in and you'll get another five percent off if you're this interested um, do not obstruct the access corridor during arrival yeah early access thank you priority and support both on games so um, I'm whether maybe they're going to support other games I I don't know and in the download screen what do we have uh, let's go back to the browser yeah so you have the host driver uh, the host software which you put onto your C drive and then you launch it and then you can just go straight into Game Glass. Now let's say uh, Greetings to all visitors. you don't want to run it on your, your tablet or your phone and, and you have a little facility. laptop somewhere and you can just go in to um, let's have a look I think it's app.gameglass.gg there you go and because I'm already signed in, this is what I'm getting on my browser screen. Now, I can press these, but they're not going to do anything because the focus is off the game. But if this was running on my laptop, on, on my notebook, 
then it would work perfectly. Thank you, and enjoy your stay. 97% fuel, eh? Let's check that out. I'm going to top up with fuel and see how quick that changes. Right, 65 credits of fuel going in now. Yep, instant. Instant. No delay whatsoever. All right, so there you go. That is Game Glass. Gameglass.gg. I'll put the link in the video description after the stream. And I will leave all the decisions up to you. Um, but yes, I'm, I have, to, like I said, I'm, I do get a commission if anyone buys it, but I'm going to be truthful. You know, I'm not a fan of the subscription based model. Um, but if, if this was something that I was going to use every time I launched Elite, I think I would be fine with it. I would, I would buy it. Because, you know, if it's useful to me enough that I'm going to, I have to run it, be, you know, as soon as I get into the game, I have to run this, then it's going to be worth it. So, there you go. All right. Let's get back <laughs> to the game. Ah, oh, full screen. Isn't that nice? Okay, there we go. So I'm going to leave my little tablet thing, whatever it is. I don't know. I only just bought this, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Right, I'm just going to leave it on the floor to charge. Please ensure you complete all there you go. Within the allocated time. Um... Right, Corbett. I don't know if Kathina is still in the building. But my main problem I th uh, for doing this, for so re-outfitting this, is going to be um, having enough storage space to store the weapons. I do have a couple of ships in which I have put my... I don't know why I've gone into outfitting. Um, I do have a couple of... Oh yes, I do know why. Um, I do have a couple of ships in which I can store weapons on, but I don't think, um, yeah, you see I've only got space for two. That can go. If I get rid of, there shouldn't really be any unengineered stuff in here. Not really. So if I get rid of all that rubbish. I have to keep these as well because I don't know why I've got so many of those. Man. Pacifiers. These are pacifiers are power play based, right? So I have to keep them. Prismatic shield generator. That doesn't need to be here. I could really do with more space to be honest. Advanced Plasma. Can you buy these? Or do you have to power play for those? I can't remember. Another one. That can go. Another one. Oh, wait a minute. Why am I selling the Prismatics? They're power play as well. To be honest, I only use them on the big ships. I do. So, yeah, sixes and fives. I barely use them, to be honest. I'm I'm strictly by weave person. <laughs> that sounded weird. I'm a by weave person. Heat sink launcher. I've got that stored somewhere else. It it still counts. Okay, so I've got six six spaces. Is that enough? I don't think it's quite enough. Let's get rid of this heat sink. I know it's a long way away. I think I use it on my um, anti Xeno ship now and again because you can't buy heat sinks out there. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a space for eight. That should be enough. Yeah, no, it's okay though. The prismatics, uh, you know. 
I don't think I've ever used a prismatic that's a class 5 or below. I think I only use it on the vet and the cutter, if anything. I think my cutter does have a prismatic on it, and that's the only ship in my fleet that has one. Yep, and that's in a class 8. So, yeah, no worries. Ah, but wait, though. If you sell something, right, where's that option to buy back? Where's the buy back option? Shouldn't I have that for a certain time? Um... Where was the buyback options? I never remember where this is. Where you can, yeah, you buy back recently sold stuff. Does it not work? If you sell from, if you sell from the store, does it still work? That's bizarre. But if I sell it from storage, I can't buy it back. But if I sell it off the ship, I can. Uh, that's a little bit inconsistent. Browse. Browse the shop. So if I go into... I don't know. It's going to be an optional, isn't it? Go into shield generator. Browse shop. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can't. Screw it. Frontier, that's a mistake. Not offering that option. If you sell... If you sell from a ship, you can buy it back. If you sell from storage, you can't. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Right, uh, doesn't matter because, as I say, prismatics is. I I use it on the cutter, and whenever I'm outfitting a ship, it's not something I ever ever go for. So I need to be in my vet right now, which is by weaves with fast charge, the way I like them. Get rid of your limpets. Yeah, I was very good at getting rid of limpets a little while ago. Again, this is... it's badly... it's unintuitive. You need um, to go to Shipyard, to go here, and to go to Corvette. And then you click uh, Use This Ship, and then it should say you have blah 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 still in your cargo hold do you want to abandon this cargo and just say yeah <laughs> oh well you might be right angry yeah the problem with the reason why I don't use the prismatics is the um, the recharge time. It's oh, I haven't got the patience for them at all. Really, really don't. I think I had. I think the one on my cutter is something like a 45-minute recharge. I don't have that kind of time to wait for my shields to come back. That's crazy. So outfitting. Uh, hard points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Because obviously I'm not going to be selling any of this because these are all grade 5 engineered. They've all got experimentals on and they kick major rear end. The problem is I really want something that is uh, is not going to run out of ammo. But also, so this is a little conundrum. I need to use lasers I suppose so as to not run out of ammo. And I want to have the two huge ones to be thermal vented efficient beams. 
but I also want to be able to run it, run the ship so that I can stay in the has res for as long as I want. Like I'm never going to run out of ammo. But the trick is to still be able to use only two pips in weapons and four in shields. Can that even be done? To run um, seven lasers and just have it so efficient that it only needs two pips. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you can, but it yeah, it's like it depends how much firepower you want as well. Um, yeah, you can. I know you can make ammo. I know, but some of, some of it's rather costly. I mean. If we look at the, my current ones, my multi cannons, and take a look at those. I mean, these are probably the three most easiest materials to source and to trade down to. So, of course, um, it's a very small cost, really. It would have been preferable if it was 1-1-1 one, 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 instead of 2-1-2. Two, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty much full up on everything there, so it's not really a big, a big issue. As soon as you get into standards, though, then they start requiring some of the top stuff like selenium and zirconium, and then you get the premium, which is asking for antimony as well. And as you can see, I'm very low on those. So I do have 148 reloads. Um, but you have to multiply that by seven if you want to do all all seven. It can't be done. Not for longer than twelve seconds. <laughs> uh. So what would you recommend, Kathina? Then. Uh, oh, let's see. I have. Um, I have the corrosive shell already on some of these, right? Um, oh, fitting. I wish it told you the engineering stuff here. So this, the huge one, has short-range blaster with autoloader. So it's it can constantly fire without stopping. And at short range, it's it's death and this one is exactly the same so that's what how those two are configured and then I have the large point which is the one underneath there it is yep and that one has a sturdy mount oh it doesn't have experimental nor is it grade 5 there's more power to come from this thing yet then Uh, this one is short range with autoloader again, so I don't you take a hit on the um, amount of bullets, the ammo. You take a, I think you take a hit on those when you do when you do autoloader, don't you? It does. It does something, I think. One of the modifications you can do to a, a multi cannons reduces how many how many rounds you have, and the and the two small ones are what short range blaster with incendiary and short range. So they're, yeah, they're kind of short range. This is what we have at the moment. Um, two class one multi cannons. High capacity longer. Thermal vent beams in the huge pulse burst in the class two three slots. I would rec oh corrosive does it. Oh, okay. So I would recommend class four thermal vent efficient beams. Two class two and one class three efficient pulse with oversized and two class one high 
capacity multis, corrosive when emissive. Run 3-3 three, three rather than 4-2. Okay, just copying that text. Right, well, let me just make a note of that so it doesn't, uh, so that when it disappears off the chat, I'll still have it. Okay. So, the question then, before I even begin to think about taking weapons off this one, is. Do I have the materials to engineer these weapons, or at least the majority of them? Well, let's find out. As soon as ED Engineer comes into play. Okay, I have ED Engineer. I'm just going to put it up on the screen for you. Um, give me one second, guys, and I will have this on the screen. Let me just move it over out of the way of the chat. <clears throat> Okay, so what you're looking at then is my current ED engineer. You'll need plenty of selenium. I'm screwed then. Selenium I am really down on, I think. Yeah, I've only got 18 of those, so that's out. Wow, <clears throat> need some water. Proto-heat. Um, Proto-heat radiators. I think I'm okay with those. Where can I find them? Have I gone past them? Proto heat radiators, I have 40. So I could probably do with more of those. What if I kept the build that I have, but swapped the two huge ones for the efficient beams with the thermal venting. I know that that doesn't avoid the problem of running out of ammo, but it keeps my ship cool. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't solve the problem of what I of what I want to achieve, which is just to have a ship that can exist to be fair, it doesn't even have to be the VET. It doesn't even have to be the Corvette. I just want a ship that I can just... Um, just stay inside of a Hazrez forever. Until, um, until my hull is down. I don't know whether to maybe look at my Ferdalance or... <sighs> I can't think what else. Maybe even spec up a combat anaconda or something, but and just spec it up from scratch. But it might be just easier to to do it this way. So let's have a look. Uh, let's remove. Um, the hell did I tick? Because I need to take it off. There it is. So if we go into beam lasers, and look at efficient weapons. Uh, efficient beams. I wish these were in order. So we got beam efficient three, four, five, two. Oh, where's one? Okay. So I can craft nine. That's nowhere near. Oh, it might just be enough. If I'm doing two of them, yeah, that'll be enough. Grade four, yeah, I can do it. I have enough materials to do, to do two huge beam lasers and hopefully have enough left over for the experimental, which would be thermal vent 
I can craft 17 of those, providing none of those materials interfere with any of these, and I don't think they do. So yes, it can be done. Um, two class, two short range. Plus oversize, one class. You're going to have to do me a build, Kathina. <laughs> Doesn't matter about the rest of the ship. Just if you can spec me up a, a build, a Coriolis build, with just the hard points, um, that would be awesome. But I can, I can put these beam lasers on. In fact, if I use these beam lasers for the ship's shields and then I don't use the multi cannons and, until the shields are down and just use it on the hull I'm going to use up a lot less but the the big ones are the are the ones that tend to last the longest in combat they just when all the other ones run out of ammo the big ones are just still there and it's because they fire I think it's because they fire at a slower rate so they're going like boof boof and all the other ones are going Brrr. so you know <laughs> it's they're firing off less per second than the others and they just last a lot longer and they're so powerful but I would really like to have a nice build um, with um, with a ship that can just exist in a hazres for forever. You're better off with a laser on the class three as well because it's it's hit scan. I don't know what you mean by hit scan. Let me have a look at my other ships, see what we got. So I think this python is not, it's all stock as you can see. I think it's just a storage ship for these. It's just storing stuff, that's just doing nothing. Plasma, again, they run out of stuff. They run out of ammo. The Ferdalance only needs What if we just put a, um, an efficient beam on this with thermal on this Ferdinand and see how it goes? Because it's a pretty good it's it's a pretty good ship at the moment. Because that class four will transfer over to the uh, Corvette if I need it to at another at another point. And these have already got the pulse lasers with the all different stuff on there, the phasing sequence, the thermal shock, the scramble spectrum. So what if we just put one huge beam laser, efficient thermal venting on this, and then take it into a hazres and see how she goes. It has the interdictor. This is kitted up just strictly for combat, this one. The distributor would struggle, you'd think, with a, with a, um, let's bring it up, with an efficient beam. If you put a projectile weapon on the class three, you'd have to pitch up the nose of the ship. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Beatboxing, yeah. I don't think so. That's out of my uh, skill set, I'm afraid. I almost tried it there, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Let's have a quick look at the outfitting of this thing. A white wolf, named by you guys on the stream, I think. We had a 
competition kind of thing going on. Uh, so in the core internals then. Okay, so I have this, but I could I could swap this out for a Guardian power disp, right? <laughs> Not tempting enough though, India. Not tempting enough. It. I tell you what, we could do it on this, and it would be a nice little tester to test the build and then maybe transfer it over uh, on a bigger scale to the Corvette. I think that's an idea. So, let's do that. Let's do that. So, I'll be... I will be uh, renaming my stream from out of the Corvette refit. Um, but I think if, if I guinea pig my idea onto this first, see how it goes because <clears throat> I want to just do combat and stay in there for ages because I don't know if you guys know I did this call to arms thing and guys just on this subject of the of the squadrons um, I, I want to thanks everybody for everything that you've done the effort that's gone into this is amazing um, <laughs> geez look at this where we are now the leaderboards of like we were we were at position two hundred and two and now we're down to one thirty five. That's just awesome. I mean we had two I think it was two one something or two three something. Now we're nearly at four hundred thousand in combat. That's incredible. And exploration we've dropped out of the top forty, but that's okay. Trade, 133, that's more or less yet what it got up to. That hasn't moved too much. Yeah, so you guys have done an awesome job. And we got we got quite a few more members into the uh, into the squadron as well. We're up to 80 now in the squadron. So, yeah, you guys have really been going at it. So, well done. Well done. That's awesome. Season winners announced in three days. <laughs> Okay, and then I guess all that effort goes to waste right after that. I don't know. I don't know how what happens. Um, right, all you need to do is put class 2 and class 3 efficient thermal vent beams on, keep the autoloaders on the huge MCs, and swap the smalls to basically apply deeper. Yeah, I, I can't absorb all of that. You're just going to confuse me. <laughs> If you if you put a um, if you I don't know can can you try and put a a link to the build in the chat, Kathina? And then if it doesn't allow it, I might be able to see it and allow it through anyway. Um, yeah, I can't think how else you could do it. But I will, I will um, look back on the stream after it's over and I'll go back over what you've said. Class 2 and Class 3 efficient event names. <coughs> oh, Corvus, that's a shame. I'm going to be announcing an exploration trip on this stream. I don't know. It's not that far out, to be honest. It's not a big one. But, uh, yeah. Right, let's do this. I want to get into some outfitting here. So, let's go and do this. And then we'll have a look at the Corvette slightly later. I'm a, I am a bit nervous about um, re-outfitting my Corvette. But I know it's something I want to do. I've been with that multi-cannon build for so long. Um, but I know, I know it's what I want to do to it. I want a big combat ship that's going to be able to just keep going because I know the shields are going to hold and you know even if it doesn't the hull's pretty good on it so there's nothing really to stop me from staying out there now these are all fixed lasers I wonder if I should go for a fixed beam let's have a look 
I don't mind trying fixed weapons. It, it's something I really should. I know. Uh, so what have we got on the power draw here? 257. Damage is 32.7. And this one... Okay, so the power draw is negligible, 1% difference. Distributor draw is 8% less, that might count for a bit. Thermal load is down, and damage per second is up. Oh, do I really want to engineer a fixed one? Because the problem, the dilemma here is, with fixed, the ship is harder to, for me to hit. I can't stay on it for long enough. So if I can't hit him for long bursts of t uh, for a long period of time, I won't get my ship cooled. So yeah. Okay, you're moderated. Ban me. <laughs> Some yeah, maybe I should go. Maybe I should go for the uh, gimbaled. Yep, let's go for the gimbaled. Because at least then the beam lasers can focus and stay on on power all the time. So now we need to go to an engineer and get that beam laser sorted. So, if we go to grade 5 efficient, that's going to be Brew Tarquin. So... Let's whiz over to brew. He's not too far away, right? Ah. I might have to work something out here. I don't think my FDL is going to be able to manage this little thing. Uh, okay, so if we go into here, modules. Pretty sure there's no fuel scoop on this. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. Okay. How many jumps is it, though? 16. Goodbye. Right. What we're going to do, then, is into starport services, into shipyard. And we'll go and pick up the anaconda. Can we? Yes. Warren Smith. Good evening, sir. Awesome. Thank you, Kathina. Click on that. Yeah. The multi-cannons, though, they are going to run out, though, aren't they? So maybe I can have, have those multi-cannons on the huge points and then have a couple of engineered beams in storage and I can just swap and change I can swap and change as I as I need right so if I'm going in to a has res and I know I just want to sit there for hours then I can put the the beams on and if I just want to go in you know just for a little bit of a blast then I can put the big multis on and just flick them over that way alright so let's fit those uh, that beam laser onto this thing. We seem to have some space. It's only another 7.6 million anyway. All right. Oops. Oh, shingles. Ah! <laughs> uh, how the hell did I get to my... Oh, okay. I can't get to the galaxy map because I'm using game glasses stuff. So let's press the wrong button and go into the wrong menu. Oops. Oh, let's go straight there, shall we? Mwang. Yes, and you guys should know I f still feel extremely European. 
Yes. Uh, I, can, I still consider myself to be European. Right, how many jumps have I got it down to now? Three. Much better. Let's go and get this thing engineered. The Class 4 Multis are very ammo efficient. Yeah, they are. They do last a hell of a long time, I have to say. In fact, they might last longer than my motivation to stay in the has res. I don't know. Ship uncoupled. Maintain correct lane on exit. Yes, Warren, Game Glass. We, we did cover that already um, at the beginning of the stream, so you may want to re-watch from the beginning. So let's go over to Muang and do this thing. Oh, a Type 10 would be cool, wouldn't it? 10 beam turrets. <laughs> How did that work out? So you just you just park it in in a in a res site and just leave it. <laughs> just leave it firing. Yeah, I was in the Hazres the other day doing um, doing combat work for the for the Hounds of Rustyville, and I I got my ship launch fighter out, and we were just yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Stayed in for an hour or so and got a good few ships. It's nice when you jump in fresh into a Hazres and suddenly you've got... I think there was... I had two Anacondas, two Pythons, um, and there was a Federal dropship and a Federal assault ship. I didn't know what... I was like a kid in a candy store. I didn't know what the hell to go for first. So which one... Which, of course Anaconda, right? But it depends. If you have like a deadly or an elite python, I'd rather have that than an expert conda. I don't know why. I don't know if it'll they'll probably pay about the same, but I prefer the uh, the higher ranked ships. But my first conda kill was 315,000, and on my corvette now, I have the two second scanning kill warrant scanner. I've engineered it so it does it in two seconds and that makes a massive difference. You can just start blasting on any ship and the scan will be done before it blows up even if it's a sidewinder. It's really cool. Yeah, Kathina's mod for the day. Along with Andy. <laughs> it's just so she could post a, um, a URL to me. Oh, it did drop a pharmaceutical isolator. Yes, I I got one. It was only one, but it, it yes, it did. It dropped one, and I got um, I think I got a proto radiolic alloy out of it as well. I think, if memory serves, um, and some compound shielding. So it was a pretty nice drop. All right, here we are then. Let's go and see brew. Brew, brew. I have to say, I am itching to get back on to doing um, Deliver the Moon, Deliver Us the Moon, Part 3. I w I'm so enjoying that game, and I want to get back onto it. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. I need to get there. I need to get back to it. I want to get to the end of it. It's telling a really good story. I enjoyed playing that the other day. As you can tell by the length of the stream, which shouldn't have been anywhere near that. Wow, really? Two hours?
Yeah, I think I have to figure out how long I'm prepared to stay in a in combat in one in one session, you know, and then find a ship that can. Like you know, maybe those two huge multi cannons will last that long. I don't know. I could put them on a different fire group, you know, obviously, so they don't have to be firing the whole time. But once the shields are down, those two multi cannons. It would just are just devastating on on hulls. No, I won't be entering any conflict zones. Oh, there you go, guys! Don't forget that that liner is in the top one percent. You mustn't forget that. Important information. Oh, this is not going to be. It's not going to do it. Screw it. Oh! No. I could have pulled up, but couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. Now it's going to cost me even more time. But we get a nice view from it. Star Warrior! Yeah, but there's no skill in that though. You know, just a load of turreted. But yeah, no, I'd, I'd want to have. I want to have a Type 10 sounds a very tempting um, prospect for a for a combat ship though. Even if it is a big behemoth tank thing. And the other thing I would like to have again. Which I've not had for a long time is a um, a fully combat-outfitted anaconda. I dumped mine when I got the when I got the vet, and I've not been back to a, a combat anaconda, and I, I should because they're pretty damn good. Once the most feared ship in the galaxy. until engineers and corvettes came around and cutters. Oh, where is this damn thing? There it is. I'm gonna see if I can circle around it before we get to the drop zone. Yes, yes, yes. This'll do. Might cause a blackout, but I'll take it. See how close we can get it. Nine point three. That's okay. Yeah, the Condor's amazing, though. They are. These are the. Um, these are the the mainstay ships of the game, really. When they, you know, they've been around since day one. The, the Python, the, the Anaconda. Yeah. You can you can tank an anaconda pretty well. Oh, wait a minute. Is that did that say ten? No, six. Eh. I don't have the night vision button, <laughs> so I might crash into something. I have to restore my keybinds after this. Yeah. I had to remind myself there that I wasn't in my Corvette, otherwise I would have made that. This is the Exploration Condor, Rusty, so remember that.
just reading Warren's post there. If you're going to want to get into combat, you're definitely going to want to engineer. If you want to last for any decent amount of time, I would say. If I've read your post right. Okay, so we're going to go with efficient weapons. Um, so they won't use up so much distributor. There's the power. But grade 5, it's... We have uh, 45 or 50... Yeah, 45% less distributor draw than usual. That's pretty good, almost half as much. So let's start whizzing through this. And of course this is a weapon that we can port over to the Corvette should the need arise. So it looks like I'm going to have to avail myself of some heat exchangers at some point. Don't need them at the moment, we've got enough to do the other one on the Corvette. Oh, can we get one more person on? I think I've got 99 watches. Oh no. Come on guys, stick around. Let's get it to 100. <laughs> I just, I love the triple figures. I can't beat my record though. 143 I think was the most I've had. Very humbling. Very small numbers but not for me. Depends what you compare it to I suppose. Let's get those circles almost closed. Is that enough? Oh, one more. It's so just about there. Okay. I'm done. Sorry OCDs, but I'm done on that one. And we're gonna put the thermal vent on, awesome. Right, let's take it back and strip it off the anaconda and put it back on the Ferdinands. Can't get to the galaxy map. <laughs> Take off procedure complete. Clear for departure. There is a way. There is a way. Whoops. Damn you. Keep pressing the wrong button. There, engineers. Uh, right, to get to Shinrata Desra then, we just choose Laurie Jamison. And that'll get us there. There we go. Always a way. There's always a way. Flight control. Now offline. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye. I wonder if there are any Elite Meat tickets left. Is anybody here going to the Elite Meat on, in April? In Cambridge? I'll be there. I will be there in all my glory. Well, maybe some of my glory, maybe not all of it. Four, three, two, one, oh, that's going back a bit, Cathena, though. I remember getting 40s and 60s watching. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely improved. It's brilliant. Nice to see new new people as well. Oops. Yeah. I always tell myself, you know, about staring at the YouTube chat while I'm doing something while I'm doing a maneuver and I I never learn. I never learn. Oversized thermal vent on the mediums. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. You know, how many? Th what's the minimum thermal vents that you need that you can get away with, so that when you're firing, your ship cools down to almost zero, 
Um, like, if if I had one thermal vent on one huge beam, would that be enough to cool the, to cool the entire ship down, so I could run other engineering upgrades on the other lasers, other experimentals? You know, just like how much can I get away with? Or how little can I get away with? Because obviously thermal venting every beam laser. If you have a ship with six beam lasers and you thermal vent them all, that's overkill, right? You're just wasting you're just wasting it because you may only need one or two lasers to cool the entire ship down. Did you fit the 4A laser? Uh, yes, I did, Andy. It's on this exploration condor because I wasn't prepared to take the Fertilance 16 jumps to go and get it engineered, so I've had to do it with this one. Oh, I see. Well, I'm, I'm assuming when it comes to beams that I would make them all efficient because I want to use as less capacitor as possible or have it drain as slow as possible with the beams so that I can keep pips into systems as much you know as much much pips into systems for as long as possible like the multi cannons for example on the um, on the Corvette that I have is uh, is two pips is all that's needed and I never ever need to really change that I can just keep two pips there and fire forever almost or well, let's just say it's not going to be forever but I can fire for as long as I ever need to in a combat scenario on one particular ship you know I hope I can remember the place I was at before. I think so. Yeah, so two huge efficient beams and then we you, you can run... Well, two huge efficient beams with the thermal... with the thermal venting on, right? So then the other lasers on the other hard points if they were beams, they wouldn't need to be thermal venting anymore because you you have enough thermal venting done on the ship, right? Is that making sense? So I'll have done enough to cool the ship and not worry about it on any of the other weapons. That's kind of what I'm after. if there's a correlation between longevity and the distributor usage because you get like frag cannons which barely use distributor but they run out of ammo really quickly and then you have unless you have plas uh, why was I going to say plasma slugs <laughs> I was going to say unless you keep synthesizing them but you know I'd, I want to try and avoid that as well same with multi cannons, they'll last longer still, and they'll take up not so much distributor power, which is good. And then you start getting into the realms of the lasers where they start using more. Yeah, st stealthy builds are quite something that are, I'm, I like. I do like the stealthy, uh, the stealthy ships. The ones that run cold and the ones that are hard to spot and the ones that when they fire on you they can break your target lock and stuff like that all that kind of stuff ninja ships <laughs> basically yeah ninja ships they're the kind that I like 
they get in, they do the job, and before you realize what happened, you're, you're broken into fragments. Or, what is it? Corbus says, atomic disassembly, something like that. Oh, I can't avoid this. I tried. I tried. Oh, don't lose your shields. Oh my god. I couldn't avoid it. I, I tried to spin round and avoid it, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I think I'm trapped on it. I can't seem to pull away. shouldn't be so much inertia, inertia on this ship because it's my exploration ship and it doesn't it, you could lift it up with one hand it's so light you'd be amazed how little this ship really weighs for its size Caution, deploy landing gear. yes give me a chance my god I think just fitting this whole beam laser on is <laughs> Double the weight of the ship almost. Yeah, my yeah, my skills are a little bit on the down on the downside at the moment. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Normally uh lining the ship up with a slot, I'm normally pretty slick with that. Uh okay, but uh, definitely I, I do have a headache. Uh, I don't know whether that's doing anything but I'm not going to use it as an excuse so into outfitting and we're going to strip off this beam laser and stick it onto the FDL destroy is based on the thermal load Right, noted. Like Coriolis and something like that, they do actually tell you, don't they? Like how long you can persistently fire for before you, you, you drain your distributor, right? Uh, I nearly sold it there. God, can you imagine? I would just... <sighs> right, we're going to store it. If I'd accidentally sold that, guys, I just would have... That would have been it. End of stream. I'm going to bed. Okay, so that now we're back to normal. So yeah, look, look, the total mass of the ship, 615, for an anaconda with a full kitted out exploration kit on it. It's pretty, pretty light. Uh, okay, let's get the FDL back. Oops, wrong one. Let's get the FDL back into service. This is a combat ship that I don't use as often as I perhaps should. And I can say the same for the Vulture. The Vulture is one of the most funnest, and I hate using that word, funnest. It doesn't sound like it's a proper word. Yeah, well, it's one of the most fun. Yeah, that's right. It's one of the most fun ships you can have uh, in combat is the, is the Vulture. And I really should use it more. I always have fun with that every single time I use it. Okay, so let's sell the beam laser then. Bye bye. I sell it first because I don't want it going into my storage when I swap it out. So we're just going to go and find it. It should be the only class 4 beam laser in here. I don't think I have any others. 
or overcharged. Oh, baby. There it is. So let's transfer that to the ship. And let's go fighting. See what she's like. Straight through the floor. How about that? That's only happened since I've fitted those lowering springs. So the system that I... Oh god, I'm pressing this. And my game glass thing just went off. This is ridiculous. I want my galaxy map back. Um, is it here? Yes, and the cockpit mode. I'm not really fussed about it, but if it's here, I'll redo all these. Like I said, I've got my, I do have all my, my system binds, and my system binds, Jesus. My key binds, they're all backed up anyway, so it's not a big issue. I'm looking for the, uh, for the toggle between combat and analysis mode. I don't know where it is. Never mind. I'll get by. Thank you. Okay, so I think the system I went to, it was definitely in the neighborhood here, and I think it was HR 4979. I think. Let's have a look. Yes. Check out this lot. Look, we got three ringed landable planets and I think I think there's a hazardous one around the third body I'm not sure so let's just plot to the star yes this is a nice little system to come to <laughs> I've done that Yes, listening to an Elite Dangerous video while you're playing Elite Dangerous is very disconcerting because if somebody else has an issue, like their shields go down or something, you think it's you. I'm just wondering now whether to map that beam laser on a separate group, unless it's already done. Okay, so I'm going to give myself the choice here then. So I can fire everything in one go, or I can switch to the second fire group and have the beam laser on a separate group. And now then, do I want do I want that on primary and these on secondary? No, I'll keep that as it. Okay, I'm good with that. Yeah, you're supposed to plot a route there. There we go. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, if anybody is interested in a small exploration trip, um, 
particularly directed at the squadron members, but anybody is welcome. Um, there's, it's not going to be on the next on the stream next week, but on the one after that, on the fifteenth of Feb, and it's just a little trip. It's about four thousand light years to go to Thor's Eye, obviously because of the name of the squadron, the Hounds of Rustyville is Thor, C-H-O-R, and it's just a trip out to Thor's Eye, and with the intention of just scanning as much as you can of all the good stuff. So, you know, you can skip the ices and the rockies, but just scanning good stuff. Um, we are going to plot out a route to take, but to ensure that everybody gets, I don't know, maybe as much chance to find something undiscovered, maybe it would be easier just to find your own way there, not necessarily in a straight line, um, and there's no deadline to get there, you just get there when you get there and that's it. I will be showing you an image at the end of the stream with all the details. So this is the one I went to last time and it is indeed round the third body. So let's see what we've got. Let's see what this ship is like. I'm going to initially put it on to the same pips. I don't think this ship could even run with two pips and weapons before I put the beam laser on. Never mind now. Let's try 3-3 three, three first, see how she goes. Now what's cool with this is that the whole ring system is com constantly, or it seems to be constantly in the light. There's no dark part. And it's very, very bright and it's misty. So you, it's graphically it's quite nice in here. But it is super bright. But it does look good. And you do not need night vision. Not in here. Two pairs of sunglasses, possibly, but certainly not night vision. Can I get that one more like to go to 60? Just one. One. That'd be very difficult, actually. Hey, Anthony Struts. Okay, my okay, my friend. I will catch you on the next one. Yeah, you yeah catch up tomorrow, and um, I think I'm going to do another Deliver Us the Moon stream at some point in the week. Hey, we got it. Thanks, guys. All right. So yeah, it's quite bright in here. Oh, we have a Fertilance. We have a Python. There should be a... the sun should be around here as well. And I could do with another... Oh, hello. He saw... he started firing on me. Get past that key. See how, let's see how cool my ship goes. Providing I can hit the door. Can't get the scan in though. out already. I'll try 4-2 but yeah. Oh 
I've got the Killer One scanner and the beam laser on the same thing. That was a mistake. Correct that. I'm just firing the pulses at the moment. Yeah, so not fantastic on the um, distributor. Oh, I've probably lost that Python as well. It is a graphically nice uh, hazard, but that python is certainly gone. Damn him. Rapid unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> I like the unscheduled bit. Oh, here we go. Elite Python. Well, I'm dead. Especially if he's winged. Oh, jeez. Should we die? We know we're going to, right? I mean, if I'm only allowed two pips... I have to do four pips here. There's no way we take this on and live. I don't know what he's winged with, but they look like... Diamondbacks from here, although I could be mistaken. No, they are Diamondback Explorers. This is not a smart move, Rusty. Just so you know. Where was he? I can't even keep track of the guy. Getting busy. That's it, that's all I get. in shields and four pips in weapons and four pips in, en in engines
I suck at this. Da 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 da. Yep. Even even with um, efficient beams, the distributor. But I I have to compare it with, you know, like how quick did the distributor go down just on the pulse lasers? So we'll have a little look at that and see. Let me just get into some clear space. Yes, but the problem is, if well, if you take if you take out the wing ships first, the smaller wing ships, you've got to put up with the big guy firing at you for free all that time, well, the whole time it takes you to do it, and I can't do that. I can't do it that way. All right, so we have the pulse lasers here um, and the beam on a separate fire group. So, one second. I'm going to turn my phone on because I want to time this. In fact, we can do it in seconds, I suppose. Oh, where's he come from? Cobra. How do you fools make a living? what I was going to say. Come on phone, I want to get my stopwatch going on this. Do a little bit of scientific testing. Okay, so let's get out of here. So we're going to fire the pulses on their own and see how long before the distributor goes out with two pips. There we go. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Oh, not ready yet. Three, two, one, go. Fifteen and a half seconds. Let's call it fifteen. Yeah, fifteen seconds before that completely went. Let's let the distributor pile up again, and we'll check on the beam laser. All right, good to go. All right, so fifteen seconds for the pulse lasers to run out with two pips. And on the beam laser, we have... It's taking considerably longer. 15 seconds already, and we're only halfway through. Even my pulse lasers are going down, look. That was about 31 seconds, so a double, pretty much exactly double, 15 and a half to 31. So the beam laser lasts twice as long. All right, interesting. Now I'm gonna combine the two and see how long it lasts. So 15, the other one lasts half as long. So half would be seven and a half, so Uh, I don't want to say it's only going to last seven seconds. Be interesting to see. All right, so three, two, one, go. No, I can't do it. I need three fingers for this. Wait a minute. Let me switch fire groups. And this way we can have the whole lot going. Okay. So two pips and go. 
I estimated seven seconds, but it, I didn't think it was going to come true. Yeah, seven seconds. Eek. One final test. All weapons, four pips. Seven seconds. Eleven seconds. So will you gain a couple of seconds per pip then? I would say if we've gone up from it's seven to eleven, that's four extra seconds for two extra pips. Oh boy, we're in a bit of trouble. So. Yes, build me an FDO, Kathina. Definitely. Maybe I should uh, give them my current build. Yeah, I should probably give you my current build and then we'll go from there. Unless it's just weapons you're concentrating on. So clearly not really a workable solution, this. I wonder what the difference would be if I took this dis uh, this distributor off and put a Guardian distributor on. I know it's going to run the ship hotter. I th it should run the ship hotter, right? I think you get more heat from those things. But I wonder what the tan is going to be like. beam with frags or cannons yes yes frag cannons obviously absolutely deadly but they want you, you yeah you're going to be constantly rearming restocking all the time and that's kind of the issue it's to find that balance somewhere between devastating power and the ability to keep firing as, as much as possible with a ship build that doesn't run out of ammo. guys gonna get ambushed here. Trading beacon. Yeah. Like I care about that. But how is a trading beacon a mission? What do they what do they give you in there? I've never to be honest I've not been in one. Do they give you a mission in there? Go and find me three washing machines. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Loot, it's fine. The cool thing with YouTube is that you move up the ladder kind of thing 
Like if I got a thousand dislikes and no likes, I would move up the ladder just as well. Well, I don't think it's just as much, but you, you move up, to, you know, just like you do if you get a thousand likes and no dislikes. So either way is fine with me. A vote counts either way. Uh, but yeah. I was doing this the other, the other day and I was heading towards this station and I was going to do the, I was heading towards doing the loop of shame, it was, it was over speeding. And I'd already done two previous loops of shame within the last hour and I thought that's it, I'm not doing another one. And so I just, I, I mashed the exit super cruise key and I just dropped myself out, emergency stop, took the damage, and then just, yeah, any anything to avoid the loop of shame again, it was just too annoying. The pet! Yay! Greetings, sir. Welcome. Yeah, you have to get creative with ship builds, and, you know, I think Cathena's probably done more testing than any of us. So you have to get creative and there's a science behind it, which is cool. I think that's close by, is it? Yeah, midway. Kind of <laughs> slid on the ground there. We were just on a bug to have found the wrong bugs. That's not good. One FDL build. Got it. I've got about 20 tabs open on my browser. That's an interesting build. Wow. Okay. I see a pattern though. I, I know you like those Guardian Shield reinforcement packages. Anyway, so... I'm going to have to work on that. Right, so I will need to show you this, guys. This has been... Um, can, uh, hold on, let me bring it up first. So this is what we're looking at um, in a couple of weeks' time for anybody who wants to participate. This has been drawn up by Angry Citizen, so thank you to him for that. The mission waypoints, I'm not sure how set in stone they are at the moment, but we're going to be looking at something like this in a couple of weeks. So if you fancy a trip to Thor's Eye, scanning as much as you can, so we can... But it's better if you're in the group, if you're in the squadron, because we kind of want it to go towards the, um, the leaderboard. So that, and the time isn't set in stone there either. This is just like a preliminary um, thing. So I'm not sure what time the stream's going to be. It could be 1800 hours, but it may be a little bit earlier. But as, the, as we get more towards the time, um, will let you know so again I'll put I'll have details of this up on discord and everything and if you're not on discord I will mention it again at some other point uh, so that, that should be fun to do now Thor's eye from here Jameson if I go to uh, Thor Thor's end up at Thor's leg there it is those are 4,200 light years away. It's not massive. It's not a massive distance. Um, I could probably get there on a stream, <laughs> a jet stream. And also in the system map here, this is what we get. This is Thor's eye, and down here is the black hole. And 
This is uh, this is our destination. Just a little chilled out trip there and back. And just scan as much as you can really. And then get out get us up on the leaderboards. I'm gonna leave it here guys, um, because I'm gonna have a, a, a further think about the build on the Corvette and the Ferdinands. Definitely want to redo the Ferdinands as well. And we're definitely going to revisit those on another stream. Um, I've always liked my Corvette with the multi cannons on. Um, I, I find it for PVE, it's, it's a really good build for me. Um, but I'd like to look at something where I can make more than a couple of million inside a Hazres before I have to go and restock my multi cannons again without using synth synthesis, you know. So I really want to revisit that. And the Ferdinand, as you can clearly see, needs a rework, needs an overhaul. So I'll take a look at Cathena's builds and uh, see where we're going with that. All right, guys, so there you go. Game glass, and we've had the. Um, uh, we've had a look at the uh, um, the trip, the trip out to Thor's Eye. Take a look at that another time, um, probably next week, and I'll may probably make an announcement on a separate video, so you guys are more clued in. And I think it should be a nice little trip. So, yeah, have a ship that's at least 40 plus light year jump range, and. Join us. We'll have a, we'll meet up. Maybe have a massive jump out. Um, and we also have, before I m mention, we also have a, a new private group for any Thor members. If you are a Thor member and you haven't had your invite, which you should have done, um, then you can join the Thor private group, and uh, we can all take off. But you have to be a Thor member to join that group. That's. Uh, that's a prerequisite. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I have done three hours, which is exactly where I need to be. Um, so I will probably join you at some point later in the week. And until then, have a massively great week. Take care, and thank you for all the uh, likes and subs and stuff. See you next time.